All right. First position, everything is controversial. The other side of the debate picks up and says that this is really not either a moral or economically realistic way of looking at the minimum wage issue. Instead, what we need to do is recast the terms within which we think about the relationship between employers and employees. What this position will say is, again, we do need to look at the two parties who are involved. So here we have employers. I'm going to develop a small flow chart here. So uh, down here, we'll put the other party in the arrangement, the employees. And what this position will say is that this uh, treating of all parties as equally self-responsible agents who can negotiate uh, mutually beneficial terms in a free market, that that is unrealistic about the economic and business facts on the ground. Instead, what this position will say is, if we look at the typical employees, right, particularly the kinds of employees that minimum wages are designed to help and to protect, typically what we are talking about here are people who are younger. Maybe they are high school dropouts, or maybe they are people, for whatever reason, who are just entering into the labor market. And so these people are then typically inexperienced. They typically also are poorer. They don't have very much money, right? Maybe because they're younger, maybe because they don't have very much uh, experience. So they cannot, so to speak, command very much with respect to market wages. By contrast, if we think about the employers with whom they are negotiating in the free market, what we have is people typically who are older, who are experienced rather with respect to uh, business, they know their business, they know the market, they've been around for a while, and they typically are richer. Almost by definition, if you're an employer, you've got a flourishing business, and that means that you are uh, economically successful. There's another facet here that uh, the, the advocates of minimum wage will typically argue, and that is with respect to bargaining power. Uh, if we think of a one standard kind of case, a job opens up, right? An employer wants to hire someone. Many people will apply for that one job. So what we have then on the supply side is one position, but then on the demand side, we have many people who would like to have that position. So supply and demand are out of balance, and the uh, out of balance in this case works in the favor of the employers. So what we have then is that these guys have greater bargaining power. Right? It's not an equal power relationship. So we put all of this in a box. Right? We have a party that is stronger in a number of relevant dimensions here. And then down here, we have a party by corresponding analysis that has much less bargaining power. Employers are much more in a position to be able to choose among prospective employees and to bargain them down to the lowest possible price. Employees are going to have to be more price takers. They know that there are other people competing for that same job, so they're less in a position to assert in the negotiation what they need, want, or desire. So this side says that this is the right way to think about employers and employees, not a more abstracted individual self-responsibility position. What this side will then say is if we have a free market, that is to say, we just leave it up to these two parties to negotiate with each other uh, to whatever terms they are willing to agree, what is going to happen is that the employers are going to gain right, in the transaction. They will strike deals with employees that are to their benefit, but the employees are much less likely to be able to negotiate what is to their advantage or what is to their interest. So in a free market, the argument is that the employers will win. Right? They'll be able to set very low market prices, and then by contrast, employees right, are going to lose. Right? They will have to accept very low wages just in order to have a job. So what we have then is an analysis that says in a free market what we are not going to get is mutually beneficial transactions, rather we are going to get win-lose transactions right? or zero-sum transactions. This uh, in the employment literature sometimes is called exploitation. Employers are able to exploit the uh, employees, and that is a bad situation. Now, if we think that this is a bad situation, right, uh, employees not being able to get what they want, employers gaining right at their expense, then what we're going to say is to reach a good result, to reach a moral result, or to reach a fair result, then we're going to need some power 
that's able to override market forces. That the market left to its own devices will lead to bad results. And so what we need to do is uh, have a, a more powerful force that can override the unequal bargaining power and reach a fair result. And of course, this pos position will then say that is why we need to turn to government. Uh, the government's job is to protect the weaker from the stronger. The uh, unequal power in the marketplace uh, leads to all kinds of unfairnesses. And so what we need is to have the government use its power appropriately to address those power imbalances. Sometimes this position is known as paternalism, just as a stronger father will protect a weaker child from a bully right in the neighborhood or in the schoolyard. In this case here, the government should see itself in a paternal role, protecting younger, inexperienced, weaker employees right, who are not able to assert themselves against the free market bullies who are the employers. Now, there are any numbers of ways that, uh, that the government could try to protect the weak from the stronger, but minimum wage legislation is one possibility. So. We can say a minimum wage, using that abbreviation here. What it does here is uh, redistributes the power, uh, redistributes the terms of the agreement, and what happens as a result is employers are forced to pay more for labor than they otherwise would choose to do so. So they suffer a loss, an economic loss in this case here. They also suffer a, uh, a uh, liberty loss. They're not allowed to charge whatever price or pay whatever prices they think they can get away with. And then by contrast, employees gain. They all get a raise or a higher price for their services than they otherwise right, would do so. All right, so what we have then is a case for the minimum wage. 